Meeting in Excel is a mod for Diablo 2 that changes almost everything about the game, including its summoner classes like the Necromancer and the Druid. It also creates new opportunities for summoning. For example, the Barbarian is now quite a nice summoner. If you've played the original Diablo 2 to death and you feel like having a completely new experience, this mod is worth a try. We'll begin by looking at the Necromancer class and then we'll take a look at the other classes. The first change you'll notice is that every single skill is now different, including the minion skills. You can no longer summon skeletons or golems. The first minion skill you get is the Skeletal Flayer skill. This raises a pygmy skeleton, like you'd normally encounter in the jungle. The Flayer also has an aura, it's called the Demon Blood Aura, which buffs the life and spell damage of the Necromancer, his allies and his minions. Unlike in standard Diablo 2, the spell does not require a corpse to reanimate with. In a way this is sad, but for gameplay it's good. In the standard Diablo 2, especially with a skeleton build, if you lose all your skeletons by dying to a boss, you need to go and grind on low level enemies to get corpses to replenish your army with, and have another crack at the boss. With the corpse requirement gone, it's easier to manage because you can just make the minions again out of thin air. The Flayer is a good minion, and it performs similarly to the Skeleton Warrior minions of vanilla Diablo 2, but I'd say it's not as strong or as plentiful, although it is quite fast. The next minion you'll get is the Rampager. This is a big fleshy minion that deals a small amount of physical damage and a huge amount of poison damage. I believe this minion is a custom asset minion, because I don't think I've ever seen its sprite before in the game. It's an alright minion, but nothing spectacular. These seem to die off pretty quickly, and you can only have a few of them at a time. Next up is the Lamia. The Lamia is a wraith, and it dooms the targets it hits, causing them to take extra damage from everything else. The Lamias are quite nice minions, but they didn't really blow me away. However, the Veil vale King is an absolutely spectacular minion, and my favourite of all the new Necromancer minions. The Veil vale King is very strong, if you've played Diablo 1, you'll recognize that his sprite is the Skeleton King Leoric. The amazing thing about the Veil vale King is that every time an enemy dies, there's a chance the Veil vale King will bring him back as a Veil vale Terror. Veil vale Terror is a small, strange minions that have seemingly no limit. You'll often see dozens of them on the screen, and occasionally they'll build up into ridiculous numbers, and there'll be a sea of these things striking enemies down and making even more of themselves. The only problem is that the Veiled Terrors do not follow you between levels, and they're also timed minions. They'll expire after a minute or two. The other interesting thing about the Veil King is that he'll turn hostile if killed. So when he dies, you have to fight a hostile copy of him. Considering the Sky is your most capable minion, this can occasionally be dangerous, but usually isn't that big of a deal. The final minion you get is called the Void Archon. This spirit has a warp field aura, which causes enemies to deal 25% less damage and attack 25% slower. This attack is also an area of effect attack, which deals moderate damage and also blinds the targets. On paper this minion sounds pretty good, but in practice I find this guy on his back more often than not, pushing out daisies, and doesn't really seem to pull his weight like the Veil vale King does. In addition to these minions, the Necromancer can also create totems from the corpses of his enemies. There's five different kinds of totem. The first is the Death Fury totem. It adds elemental damage to the party's attacks. Mine is currently at skill level 2, and it adds a mixture of fire, cold, and lightning damage, which will deal 2 to 4 damage per element. It's a pretty nice support totem. Next you get the Frostclaw totem which sends out slow waves of creeping cold towards enemies. It's not bad if you need some frost damage. The Fireheart Totem is my favourite. It sends out a huge barrage of firebolts at enemies. I just enjoy seeing so many firebolts flying everywhere. When you've got many of these totems out, it seems quite chaotic and it's a pleasure to watch. The last two totems are the Howling Totem and the Stormeye Totem. The Howling Totem buffs party damage, and the Stormite Totem emits bolts of lightning at enemies. 
The totems are pretty nice, and they give you a fun new way to use corpses. In Vanilla Diablo 2, I was never very interested in playing the Barbarian, but in Median XL he's quite interesting. The Barbarian can now be a summoner. He's capable of summoning a few different kinds of spirits, as well as wolves. In this regard, he can be almost considered a necromancer. Come to think of it, I think that the Barbarian now is a necromancer. I mean, calling spirits to your aid is kind of a form of necromancy. The first minion you get is the Wolf. The Wolf is a good minion, and it looks exactly the same as the Druid's Wolf in Vanilla Diablo 2. You can get an extra Wolf every 5 skill levels. After the Wolf, you can get the Guardian Spirit. This is the first of the spirits the Barbarian is capable of summoning, and like all spirits, he looks like one of the Mount Harriet champions. He's a ranged attacker and throws axes at enemies. The next spirit you can get is the Defender Spirit. He has a sword and shield and attacks enemies up close, as you'd expect. The last spirit you get is the Protector Spirit. He uses some kind of maul or big hammer to strike enemies with. Overall, the spirits are very good minions, although from what I can tell, they're lighter than the Wolf or the Necromancer's minions and will die quicker in combat. With that said, they're still very capable minions. Some other classes are also now capable of summoning minions in a small way. For example, the Amazon can now summon fire elementals at level 6. These fire elementals appear to be the only minions available for the Amazon, but she can get a decent swarm of them going. It's certainly more fun to play her with minions than without them. Sadly, the druid has become a mockery of his former self as far as minion summoning is concerned. His new minions seem to be all timed ones, and the abilities that sound like minions are often projectiles or conventional elemental spells disguised as minions, like the Hunting Banshee, which is just a guided missile which explodes into a frost nova on impact. With that said, the Dryad, or Pixie Summon, does seem interesting. It is able to convert enemies to your side as long as it is alive. It also looks kinda hot, which is nice. There are more minions further down the line, so maybe the minions improve as you level up. I personally couldn't stomach playing to a high level using the druid. It's just not enough minions for me to be able to stand. The paladin is now very interesting. He's capable of different progression paths, such as good, neutral, and evil. These paths come with different abilities, and if you go down the neutral path, you also get a limited degree of summoning. You get two different kinds of summoning spells, and one indirect kind of summoning spell. For example here, you might be able to see behind my paladin here, there's some kind of strange angel creature walking around. Yeah, that thing just comes out of the blue. I've got no idea really why or how it spawned, but one of my abilities must be causing it to come. I'm going to score Median XL an 8.2 out of 10 for its Median mechanics. Overall, I like Median XL because its Median mechanics are mostly good. It also offers a completely new experience, but I've had to criticize it. I'd say it feels like perhaps they changed a bit too much. Some of the classes I used to like have become uninteresting to me, such as the Druid. But then on the flip side, other classes that were previously uninteresting, like the Barbarian, have now become very good. Content-wise, my only criticism is that a lot of the monsters now feel out of place. Like in Hell, I was fighting teddy bears and stuff that would normally be in Act 1. And throughout the entirety of Act 2, I never saw a single Mummy Lord. There's also a lot of new creatures added to the game, and most of these monsters blend in perfectly well and look more or less like they'd always been in the game, but others clearly come from elsewhere. For example, I've seen a lot of the Hell Knights from Diablo 1, and while this is fine, they don't look too bad, but it's still something that might put some people off, because these sprites and things, they're not part of the natural Diablo 2, and sometimes in some small way they can kind of stand out a bit. I don't think Median XL is better than Vanilla Diablo 2, but I still think it's nice and worth your time, especially if you want to experience Diablo 2 in a fresh new way. Thanks for watching, 
I hope this video has helped you find another game which you can enjoy necromancy in. I've got more necromancy videos coming your way.